All right, so this is going to be a quick video going over a couple of things for animation, uh, in particular character sets, uh, posing, uh, using the timeline, and graph editor. Um, so use the graph editor and how to tweak using the graph editor. So let's go ahead and begin with character sets, what character sets are. So character sets are essentially kind of like a grouping of controls, a grouping of whatever you kind of really want, attributes essentially, that um, you can kind of have all into one big group so that you can have it more convenient to save, to make poses, to use a graph editor. So for example, um, right now you can see there's a lot of different controls on Barry. Um, you have all of this stuff right here. And not only that, but you have all of the different stuff that's hidden. If you uh, change some attributes like the FK, IK, and stuff like that. So um, kind of keeping track of all of these things, where they are, um, having keyframes for them, start and stop, um, and kind of having them all sync is kind of you know very hard to keep track of. So as a result, you use character sets. So what a character set does is you can kind of add all of the different attributes you see, all these different controls and attributes for these controls into a character set. You can see that the attributes have this yellow mark next to them, and that they're the input. You can see which character set it's a part of. So for this one, it's, it's the Barry character set. And you can kind of um, basically just have them all in one group so that when you press the S button, you're going to see there's a keyframe on the timeline. It usually takes a second because it's a large grouping. So just give my uh, just one second. There you go. Um, and uh, once you do that keyframe, you're going to see that it's not just the thing you had selected that ends up getting keyframed. As long as you have the character set activated, everything that's a part of that character set is going to be keyframed. So not just this, but also all of the controls in between over here, all these controls over here that have this yellow, uh, this kind of control over here, all of them get keyframed. And so by doing that, I can basically have Barry move from one pose to the other like this, putting, putting his arms down like that. And so you can see I have that on frame three, and if I go back to frame zero, it goes back to what I had. So frame zero, I had it saved to here. Frame three, I have it saved to here. And it's very easy for me to be able to do this because instead of having to uh, manually save this and manually save this, I can kind of go ahead and uh, save both just by pressing S two times and changing the pose. Not only that, but I can also take the character set over here on the timeline, I can drag it and make it slower or quicker and kind of speed it up or slow it down all in one group. So instead of having to select everything that's a part of the animation, I can kind of just have the entire group that I'm able to um, edit and manage. The same goes for if I open up the graph editor, you're going to see if, that, if I select the character set and I go into the graph editor, all of the animation for all of the different attributes is going to be over here. So if I wanted to, I can also go ahead and, uh, for example, take the first pose, copy it, and then let's go to frame 5 and paste it again. And um, that way, again, very quickly, I'm able to copy and paste poses. So this is a very easy way for you to play around with poses, uh, play around with the timing of poses. All you got to really worry about is how the character is going to be posed and at what time. And it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to manage that without having to worry about the technicalities of how to s which controls you saved at what times, making sure all the controls are saved at different times, etc., etc. And so uh, the first thing you kind of want to do when you get an animation started, let me go ahead and select all the poses and then delete. The first thing you kind of want to do is you want to get the character blocked out. And so to do a blocking kind of like pass for animation, essentially kind of just want to have the character doing their different poses without having to worry about the intricacies of like what goes on between the poses. Only focusing on the poses you think are important for um, kind of giving off like a certain animation. So uh, for, 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 let me give you an example. I want um, Barry to have like a, an animation where maybe he says hi. And I'm going to make a very rudimentary right now, so I'm going to do it very quickly. So the first pose I would have Barry at is I'd probably bring his arms down like this. There you go. So you have a somewhat relaxed pose from Barry um, that I, I made very quickly. Let me just go ahead and bring his tail down. So I'm going to go ahead and press S. And you're going to see Maya take a, a couple seconds to give the character set a uh, key keyframe. <clears throat> So now that the keyframe's there, I'm probably going to have it linger for maybe like 10 frames. So I'm going to maybe save on the ninth frame. And then on, um, let's say, frame 15, I'm going to have Barry kind of, and then I'm going to press S. So now you can see uh, I kind of have the very basic poses of the initial pose, and then he goes on to his next foot pose. And then after that, the next thing I'm probably going to have him do is maybe go back to the original pose that he had. 
So in this case, this right here, I'm going to copy that and maybe around frame 20, paste it. So he's going to go back to here. And the only thing I'm going to edit is I'm probably going to have him start to raise up his hand like this. And then maybe frame 25, I'm going to have him put his hand all the way up like this. There you go. Notice I don't have to worry about keyframing everything in between. I just press S. So you can see the previous pose here, this one right here. I'm probably just going to have him then go back to the previous frame, copy. Paste. And then finally he's going to go back to the pose he has over here. Copy that. And then there you go. So then what we get is that. So all we have to do now is fix the timing. We're going to have him perk his ears up. I'm probably just going to copy this frame right here. Then I'm going to have a bit of timing between him perking his ears up and him raising his arm. And I'll probably slow down him shaking his arm. It happens a little too fast. There you go. And then all I got to do now is focus on the next thing. So we fit, we um, got character sets down. We got uh, posing in the timeline down. The next or the final thing is graph editor and tweaking. So the graph editor and tweaking makes things a lot easier for you to kind of understand um, or kind of tweak these movements. So let's start with one very simple movement. I think is very easy to tweak. Um, let's get the ears. All right. So what we have, what we see happen here is the ears kind of perk, and I kind of want to give it a bit more animation to make the perk look a little bit nicer. When you open up the graph editor, so you go to Windows Animation Editors and then the Graph Editor. You can see a bunch of stuff. The only thing you have to really worry about is uh, the main things you're focusing on for this animation in particular. So in this per particular case, um, I know that the ears are rotating, and if I look over here, when I see the way that they rotate, I see that it's kind of mostly uh, the Z axis. I mean, all of them change, but it looks like it's going to be the Z. And if you can't really tell for sure, you can always just look at the smaller. You can always just kind of play around with the individual uh, lines to see which one you think makes the most sense to edit. So in this case, it looks like this is the one that I'm focusing on. And so the problem that I have with this one is just that um, when they perk up, they kind of stand still. And you can see that there's a movement, and then right over here, it kind of flat lines. So if this line represents the um, rotate Z axis, and the rotate Z motion is just moving from... Um, in kind of in this direction and the problem that I have is that it moves and then it stops very suddenly and you can see that represented over here in the graph editor as it moving and then stopping very, very suddenly so what I can do is I can have this line selected right click and insert key and then I can take that key press the translate tool so that would be W on your um, on your keyboard and then hold shift while pressing the middle mouse button in and dragging up and you can kind of drag this up in a straight line and finally you can kind of grab all these three controls and then press this button the first kind of wave that you see on the top with an A underneath you can press that to kind of smooth out the line and you're going to notice now the difference between this one and this one just by doing that bit of a tweaking you can see that it has a, has a bit of a bounce over there so I'm going to change it up a little bit I think the bounce is a little too aggressive so I'm probably going to have it bounce a little bit less and I'm probably going to take the bounce over here and make it a little bit linger before he kind of moves it back down. All right, so let's see how this looks. Nice. And so I'm going to do the same thing over here when he... His torso kind of twists. I can see that it's this translate Z. I'm probably just going to bring this down a little bit. Have this go up and bring this down a little bit. Press A. There you go. Now you're starting to see just how much the tweaking kind of affects the uh, the way the animation looks. I also know that over here he's going to kind of lean back. Let me go ahead and do this to make this more of an arc. So if I want this to be kind of a little bit more pronounced, I can just drag this down. You can kind of see him actively leaning back. There you go. In this case, I think it's probably better to just have him 
kind of like that. There you go. You can see over here, this one needs a little bit of work. So in this case, uh, I want to work the most on the Rotate Z, I think. Just in case I need to prove it. There you go. That is the one that I try to focus on. So over here, you can see he raises his hand a little bit. Now I want to keep it like that. It makes it kind of look like he's a little unsure. So to make that look a little bit better, I'm just going to drag this part over here. There you go. Go ahead and bring this down. Bring this down. Give it an A. Raise this up like that. And bring this ultimately down so it doesn't go into his ear. I'm probably going to also make this a bit longer. And maybe I'll have it. bit there for a bounce too. Not so aggressive. Perfect. A little bit more. Perfect. And one thing that makes things a little bit more natural is you don't want the you kind of want things to not move exactly at the same time because it because com it comes off as very robot-y. You want things to um, kind of move in a sort of uh, very very subtle uh, order of operations. So um, just being able to kind of differentiate that makes things look a little bit more natural. So in in just a very short amount of time, oops. I was able to get this very, very, very short animation of Barry, but this was just in like 10 minutes, and it, it showcases everything. We made some of the poses with the character sets, um, and we edited uh, the kind of timing of everything with the timeline. Um, you can do that with graph editor as well, and then we kind of tweaked everything up using the graph editor so that um, all of this kind of basic animation uh, that's roughed out kind of gets smoothed out. We get more of a kind of natural feel of things, and it comes out looking a lot better. And then after that, I'd probably maybe just have one final pass where we kind of just make everything look perfect. All the small little intricacies, uh, his eyes darting around, small things like that. But um, the first and second pass kind of focus on just blocking um, and then uh, smoothing out that pass using the graph editor. So this is kind of how you want to go about um, doing general animation. It goes over character sets posing and the graph editor. Um, I might make a future video to go over some of the intricacies of like how to uh, work with uh, maybe like lip syncing, facial animation. Um, personally, I kind of want to make videos on how to break the rig a little bit to kind of create your own facial expressions if you wanted to using blend shapes um, and kind of just like impromptu rigging. Because I think that would give a lot of animators a lot more control over what they want. But ultimately, um, a good rig would be able to give you whatever controls you really need for animation. So, um, yeah, this is pretty much it for this.